it's Matt, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're gonna talk about some basic database operations that you would expect out of most databases. And we've already done programmatic reading, so we're gonna do creating, updating, and deleting data. I don't think in that order. Um, we're building off of the previous video. If you're not sure what code you should have, we have a checkpoint available that you can just check out and copy paste. But I'm gonna be working straight from the last video. So last video, we updated our, um, we updated this function, regenerate to dos, that instead got all the stuff, all the to dos at once, and then updated the to do list. So every time we load the page or refresh the page, things work out as it intended. The first thing I think we should be able to do is create a new to do, because right now, if we create a new to do, we enter it, nothing shows up, that's pretty boring. So the way that we do that in my sample code is right here in this handle to do input event, and specifically, this line of code is, this block of code is what's going on. We create some new to-do object, we push it, and then we regenerate the to-dos. So this is what we're gonna be editing here. Um, and again, if you don't really know what the sample code does, take some time, take a look, take a read. I've left some comments, um, but big, really just focus on the Firestore stuff that we're implementing. So I'm gonna say, hey, uh, we should still create a new to-do object, but instead of pushing it to some global to-dos array, because that's what we're getting rid of. I'm going to use this code instead. So let's quickly explain what's ex what exactly is going on with this code. Uh, first, we're saying, OK, so again, we're going to use db.collection.todos. So this is, again, a reference to the todos collection. This time, we're going to use dot .doc. So dot .doc is short for document. And in the same way that dot .collection todos is a reference to the todo collection, dot .doc something would be the reference to that document within the to-dos collection. So there's a nesting sequence here. Next, we have this like new to-do.id. Uh, what is this? If you take a look at the sample code, um, we just create an ID when we create a new to-do. So in this case, it's just like the date plus the content of the to-do. Um, not a very good ID, but that's not really the focus of this workshop. Uh, so this is just a string. And all documents have an ID. We talked about this, I think, two videos ago. Then. Uh, we use this dot set. So dot set is really just a word for create, and it says make the entire body of a document, um, whatever the input is in here. In this case, new to do is a JavaScript object. So again, going back to the sample code up here, um, this just creates an object with the keys text, complete, and ID. And in particular, remember that we created a document with complete and text when we made this entire collection. We haven't made ID, and I'll come back to that in a moment. But that's what's going on here. So just summing up this one line, collections reference, then we're getting a reference to a doc, and then we're setting the doc's value to something. I'm gonna then point out, you might ask, wait a second, um, what if the document doesn't exist? And that's a great question. The answer is, uh, Firestore doesn't really care. When you use dot set, it either, if the document doesn't exist, creates the document and sets the body, and if the document does exist, it overwrites it. So that's kind of how that behavior works. Then we have our typical friends dot then and dot catch. Dot catch is the same thing as normal, so we're not going to really focus on that. But what's going on with this dot then here? So first, notice this underscore. Underscore just means I don't really care about whatever I get given. In this case, it's like the status of the request and stuff like that. But I am going to do something after the set is successful. And in this case, I'm going to regenerate the to-dos. I want to take a bit of time and just explain the logic here, right? So you don't want to regenerate the to-dos until after the document has been updated. Why not? Because if you regenerate the to-dos right at, like, in between the document request being sent and the document operation actually happening, you might get an old copy of the to-dos and your app's not going to work the way you want it to. This dependency chain, uh, which is you need to have the update happen first before you read it again, is a really common issue that you'll deal with in web apps. And JavaScript's very you know, fancy way of doing this is with this dot then syntax and chaining these kinds of requests together. If we take a look here now um, and refresh our page, now we can add you know, finish homework. We'll hit enter. And you notice that it showed up, which is super exciting. In addition, if we head to our console, we can see that a new document has been created with this ID and a text that says finish homework. Great. So now we've created some data programmatically. The next thing I want to focus on is uh, how we can now delete data, right? So if we click this button right here, this button doesn't do anything. Well, what does clicking that delete button actually do? There's a function I made called on naw click. <laughs> and basically all this function does is it gets called every time this thing gets called and with the ID of the document. And that ID is gonna be super useful for us in a moment. Luckily for us, 
uh, replacing this global to do's thing is actually pretty simple to do. We're just going to remove it and change it with this code. And this code again is in the notes. Here, this is very, very similar to what we did before. We're taking our database, we're getting the to do's collection. And then after that, we're getting a document with the ID that's being passed in. And instead of using set, we're using dot delete. If you can use your imagination, uh, dot delete deletes the document. <laughs> then we do the exact same process that we did before. Uh, once the document is done deleting, not before, then we can regenerate the to-dos. And if there's an error, we just you know pop up some error message that says something went wrong. So if I refresh my page, uh, I can now delete finish homework, and then it works. And there was a bit of lag time, and that lag time comes from it having to first delete and then regenerate. I'm going to point out that at this moment, this is not going to work. Why is that? Well, if we head back to our document here and notice that the other one was deleted, we don't have an ID here. We have this ID, but that's not exactly how we wrote this code. So you can manually delete documents too, and this kind of was an excuse just to show you how it's done. If you do this, you can delete the document, and if we refresh the page, it's gone. Um, but I'm just going to add, I don't know, like uh, go to meetings. And this kind of works all as intended. Great. The last thing I want to talk about today in this video is how can we update data? And in particular, the use case we're going to have is when we click this Done button, we want this to have a strike through. And in other words, we want to toggle the complete object in some sort of document. So how are we going to do that? Before I actually make this change, I'm going to make one quick refactor, which is I'm going to delete this .id over here. This is like line 106 for you if you're following along. Um, this is just because I want the entire to-do object. In particular, I want to know what the status was before we flip it, just to kind of let you know what's going on there. Uh, now, let's change how our on done click works, and we're going to refactor this entire function. So instead of taking in the ID, I'm going to now take in the entire to do, and I'm naming it appropriately. And then here, we're doing a pretty similar operation to what we did before db.collections.todo.doc.todo.id. We're just getting uh, the document reference from the to do's collection with the correct ID. Nothing too fancy here. Then we're going to use dot update, and dot update works differently from dot set. As I mentioned, .set replaces the entire document. So if there are some fields that you haven't specified, they'll just get deleted. .update is what we call selective updating. So when you pass in an object, and here I'm passing in an object with one key, complete, and the value is just uh, the inverse of its current complete value. So if it's true, it's going to be false. If it's false, it's going to be true. Um, it's going to say, OK, let's go to this document. If complete exists or doesn't exist, it doesn't matter. Just set complete to this. If there are any other things like the text or the ID, don't change those. We don't really care. And this is the functionality that we want. We don't want to change the text of a to do once we just toggle its complete stats. Then these lines are the exact same ones that we've seen again and again. Uh, once that's done, then we regenerate the to do's. And then after that, if there's an error, uh, we can log it if needed. Let's take a look. If I refresh this page and I hit done, that works. And again, if you notice, there's a bit of lag, and that comes from us having to make a round trip request to a server. OK, so that was hope a little rapid fire, but I introduced you to uh, three different other operations you can do with Firestore for super basic data stuff. We created some data programmatically, we updated some data, and then we deleted some data. And we did those with the set, delete, and update functions respectively, or in some order, uh, and using the dot doc. Uh, subfield of dot collection. So basically, that's the most important part. If you're not sure what to do, we had checkpoints for every single one of those actions. So you can take a look at the notes, uh, read that checkpoint, and you know, figure it out. On top of that, uh, what we're going to do in the next video is do some cooler tricks that makes our app more efficient, easier to code, and, and finishes up these done all and add all features, which if you notice right now, don't do anything. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.